Howdy, welcome back to Dion Talk. Today, I'm gonna to ask a professional who actually has the knowledge to answer the question, because I'm not the guy to do it, on how do you track your rental information? Because my goal to reach financial freedom was to do it with the least number of rental properties that provided the most amount of cash flow. So my cash flow is four or five times what it takes me to live, so I was able to retire with 16 rental units. I don't even know if I want 16. I might sell one to pay off some of the debt to increase the cash flow and have less things to deal with. So the way that I track my data on my rentals is kindergarten simple. Mm -hmm. So here's what it looks like with 16 rental properties. I have Dana Dunford, the CEO of Hemline, who actually has an, a program that you can list your properties on. And I used it recently. I'll be doing a reaction video to soon where it was so much easier to put the data in once than to know several different platforms to hit one button and get it put out on 30 different places for people to see my rental. I had several qualified applicants in a few hours. I had somebody signing a lease within six, which is to me a record. I've done next day signings, but six hours was my record. Uh, I want to say thank you, Dana, for putting your platform together because for that, it worked really well. But as far as tracking the data goes, a lot of people are familiar with me because of my binder strategy, where I actually have a three ring binder, where I have a strategy that gets my tenants to request a rent increase. So for me, that's made it very easy to find cash flowing deals on the MLS. But when it comes to tracking the data on my rentals, what I use is an actual leather binder where each property gets 10 pages. So on the page is a picture of the property. I will have the mortgage number, the principal interest taxes and insurance, the insurance number. I'll have the tenants, the lease, the amount, the coded locks with the codes for the doors. I'll record on each page when washers and dryers were replaced or, or taken out because I don't supply them, when the refrigerator was replaced, when the roof was done. It's, it's kindergarten simple with a small portfolio. It's very easy to do that. My entire business with 16 rental units looks like this. One checking account, one savings account, one Excel spreadsheet with an, a tab for income and a tab for expenses that I send to the CPA. And that book, that's it. I would not want to do that if I was like Michael, Michael Zuber from One Rental at a Time or Matt, the Lumberjack Landlord, who have both of them over 100 units each. And you're trying to figure out things like what products last the longest what contractors had the best uh, materials, all of the, the data that comes from uh, a larger scale, I wouldn't want to record the way that I do. So Dana, can you go over really quick, how do the, because you have 17,000 rentals or something like that? Yep. In, so you're somewhere around there uh, in, your, in your system. What kind of data can people track using Hemline? Yeah, uh, great question. So, um... As Dion mentioned, there's no right answer for how you manage your rental properties. Your goal is to reduce risk, right, with it and make it where it's so kindergarten simple, as Dion says, that you want to buy more properties. The moment that it doesn't become kindergarten simple, um, where you kind of feel like you have this stress and anxiety from your rental properties, it means you're doing something wrong. And that's where you have to look at your system and say, how do I improve this system and make it better? It's all a process, an operational process, right? With human beings involved. So you have to remember there's a human at the other side, a person, that tenant, who is your customer, right? Um, so there's there, there's a lot of things you can track. I, I can give some examples of um, the benefits of Hemling um, for tracking. And um, we can talk about that. Um, Dion, feel free to jump in on things. Um, so the first I would say is just this mental state for both you and for your tenant. So the tenant is in this binder. You have, I think you even, did you have a picture of them or was that just a picture of your property with you in it? I didn't know if I saw so, a tenant in there. So in um, here, it's a picture of the property. Okay. And that's it. Just the exterior. Just oh, one it's you. It, is that you? Me in front of the property. Okay. Right. That's you. I wasn't sure if you like took a picture of your tenants or something. Oh, that's no, no, no. That would... <laughs> So um, I, I went one day to each property and took a picture. Yeah, great. Um, so you, uh, one reason um, with the system is to track everything, especially communications with the tenant. So um, there are tenants who literally will go online and look for something that doesn't use a system. Um, these are we call them professional tenants. They know the laws better than most DIY landlords. And they say, great, I hope this person's not going to run a background and credit check and see that I have 50 evictions on my record. I'm hoping that they're not Dion where they're so skilled with this. Um, and if someone's using a system, 
most likely that online system is going to have a set process that helps mitigate that risk. And if they are, um, uh, if they see that someone's not using a system or, you know, just um, advertising their rental just on Zillow or something, they say, ooh, I might be able to get around that. So once one reason to get a system is, is, is that professionalism, showing, hey, I'm professional. I treat this like a business. It's going to be a standard process. There's no fair housing violations here. I'm going through the same process for every candidate who's applying for the tenants that are applying. And I'm going to make sure that it's a great experience for you, but it's also a great experience for me. We're following the lease. And so it's the first one. With that, there's accountability in it. So one example is paying rent. Um, rather than logging into your bank account and confirming, did the tenants not only pay, but did they pay the right amount? Like instead of 1600 did they make sure they paid the 1700 because there was just a wrench? Um, renewal and with a rent increase, making sure that all of the T's are crossed and I's are dotted and setting a precedent with the tenants that, hey, if you don't pay by X date per the lease contract, the legally binding document that we have both agreed to, you are going to go ahead and get a late fee and you must pay that before the rent. We're setting this precedent for everyone. So we think that's really the first most important thing um, to, to set up with that. And then um, it's also certain things on the accountability side with tenants and this communication that um, are things such as like, we've seen tenants in the system on the 30th, first of the month request saying, hey, there's mold. I'm not going to pay my rent up to, uh, on the first of the month because there's mold and I can't pay. Well, Technically, based on your state laws, you get 30 days notice or something like that in order to remedy whatever the repair request is. And so making sure you have that accountability, it's all tracked in a system to say, nope, the request went in on this date. That is not a reason not to pay rent. We are handling it, et cetera. So the communication with the tenants, I think, is super important for you to think about. And then the other thing is, to your point, uh, Dion, tracking the history. So basically tracking and making sure, okay, we've had this repair request, like, with another tenant that the AC went out, didn't we fix it? Let me, let me go back and check it. Having all of those repairs in the system, referring back to old leases, referring back to prior communications, looking at lease renewal amount um, every single year, having all of that tracked in a system will really help you. Um, to Dion's point, I think for every person, it's different. For Michael Zuber, it's going to be a lot different than Dion. But the most important thing here for you is to say what system is going to work for me and making sure you have a really good process in place for you and for your tenants. Um, so hopefully that's like a good rundown of um, when you think about your property um, and the whole life cycle, um, how to think about a system and how that may be able to help improve the process. So there are two things that would make my life a lot easier using a system like Hemlet, right off the just from what you're just talking about. The first is communication. Uh, I live in a state where emails are admissible in court, but texts are not. So my general policy has been, I will communicate through text. I have this conversation with tenants when we're signing leases or re-signing leases as a reminder that if there are three words, if these three words are going to be in the conversation, call me. And I should probably be your second call. If you're going to use these three words, you're probably calling the emergency number 911. Fire, flood, or blood. If those three words are going to be used, or one of those three words is going to be used, that justifies calling me. You can text me for most things like a, a repair that needs to be done within the next couple of weeks. If anything sounds like it's going to become important, I shift it to email so that we'll have that admissible in court communication. But 16 rentals, uh, some of them are roommates. Uh, so there's more than one family unit renting the place. Some are text, some are emailed. They're not all in one place to communicate. So if I had that one platform to do communications through, that would simplify a lot. And the second thing is um, I'm right at the limit of remembering when leases are up without having like a, I, I could make a spreadsheet that had the dates and anything. But if I had a system I was logging into that said you have 90 days or 60 days and I could check to know when to go and have that next binder conversation with the tenant. Um, so there are definitely benefits to even a smaller size portfolio. But I, I mean, definitely, if you're going to grow larger than mine, uh, my simple format wouldn't work at, at the 40 or 60 or 80 units, let alone the hundreds like uh, Matt and Mike have. That's awesome. I think I think that there's a system there that would really benefit a lot of people. And that's fantastic. I, I love those three words. Um, I'm curious to know if there's anything else. I'm trying to think of something else. Like if they say, 
lease violation or something else in it, if there is anything else that should go to email. Um, but yeah, we do that. I mean, actually, tenants really do like text messages. So we'll send a text me message notification that says you have a new message, but they have to click on to, to respond. And that goes via email. So technically, anything that's via text message also gets responded via email to kind of get around that law. Um, to make sure that it's all tracked in an email as well um, system to say, we can't have something that's thrown out from court just because of a technicality that a landlord didn't know about. Great. Well, thanks so much for having me on the show. And um, uh, the the binder is fantastic, especially with uh, you having the repairs. Um, I think for uh, things like washing machines, dishwashers, et cetera, it's really good to track that. People track that in Hemling as well. It's really good for you to have all of that to make sure you can say, should I repair it or replace it? What's what's going to be um, what's going to be most cost effective for me and best for the the property and cash flow? Awesome, great. All right, I look forward to the video that we're going to do in a couple of weeks. Likewise, thanks so much, Dion, for having me. Right. Until my next video, thanks for coming to my Dion talk. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. And someday, I am going to make the video on. All of the reasons why I'm single. But not today.